Hey, Johntons and Johntonites, it's Jason Desmond from the Johnton Collective with yet another edition of What's Up With That. This is where we question, we learn, and most importantly, where we grow. Please subscribe, like, and comment below because we love hearing from you. Maybe to tell us about something that we've done before or maybe something that you're very passionate about that you want us to get into. Get in touch. We'll get right on it. Now, this pandemic, it's kind of changed everything for us. And thanks to it, Everything really has become digitalized, including education. But in Malaysia, we're taking things slightly with a, like a different twist in a way because we're going old school on this with something that I grew up with even, TV Pendidikan. Sure, they're calling it Didik TV these days, but what everyone is really talking about is that viral video. Seriously though, what's up with that? Now, today we're going to talk about what's lacking in our education system, is Malaysia even ready to go digital with education, right? And what isn't the Ministry of Education doing to reform the system? To discuss all this with us today, it's a man who actually was in the thick of it. He knew all about it. And he's really the man that we need to get all the information from today is Dr. Mazli Malik, former Minister of Education. And also he's the founder of Education Movement Untuk Malaysia. Dr. Mazli, how are you? Great. Thank you, JD. You've been uh, you busy uh, recently. <laughs> yeah, as usual. <laughs> it's very unusual if, you, if I'm not. <laughs> what have you been up to recently, actually? Been a lot of things. First and foremost, as a, an MP, Mm. I'm supposed to go to the parliament, but there's no parliament sitting. <laughs> so I have to keep myself busy with my constituency, with my constituents. And I keep, I also keep myself busy with my education uh, works. You know, I have my own NGO uh, with that uh, Unto Malaysia movement. And those things keep myself busy. They occupied my shadow in this kind of interview almost every night. <laughs> so there's a lot that's going on. And... Because a lot of people think like because recently with uh, with a change in government and also there's a, a new education minister that you've you've just moved away from education, but you're still very much involved in uh, education. So because we, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. I, I just found, I just checked out the website for uh, Unto Malaysia. What's 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 that about? Unto Malaysia is a movement with a philosophy to humanize the education in Malaysia to bring. You know, the right, yeah, as a whole, to look into education as something uh, which is part of their lifestyle, but with an opportunity. And we want everybody to get involved with education, not only to talk about education, but to contribute towards uh, educating the nation. Yeah. Because, I mean, I hope when, that when makes you're. Sense. Yeah, it does. It does. Because I'm just checking it out. There's like a lot of different okay. things here. Uh, there's. Something untuk murid tercicir and and whatnot, right? So is it uh, is it an yeah exactly is it a, an um did it start the moment uh, you left the ministry? When when I left the ministry, I thought that uh, there are a lot of things that uh, I wanted to do when I was uh, in the office, but I couldn't accomplish them. So when I was no longer the minister, I'm looking at a few of the gap that I could fill in as a normal uh, MP and normal citizen. And I would, I would want, I mean, everybody, all Malaysians, all citizens to get involved in education. So, but then, if you still remember, the, not much I could do. So I still remember last year, I kept myself busy with uh, the social media in promoting uh, a lot of educational efforts. Uh, you know, I introduced the free online courses through my platform, uh, social media platform to, to the citizens during the lockdown. And then I made uh, some video which consists of uh, advices and uh, tips for the teachers, for the parents and for fellow educators and a few of those kind of things. So when the lockdown ended, we started to establish uh, an NGO called Reju Rejuvenasi Pendidikan. Mm -hmm. uh, we tried to look at what is the uh, most needed uh, effort in education uh, at the moment. So we found that uh, most of the international agencies like World Bank, like uh, UNDP, they're talking about the lost generation. You know, due to the MCO or due to the lockdown yep. all around the world, a lot of kids uh, did not go to schools. 
and they miss more than 180 days from schooling Correct. in most part of the world apart from Singapore, Japan and Korea if I'm mistaken but the rest of the world they miss the school days so we have problem with those at the formative years those at the preschool those at the uh, year one so they're supposed to learn all these basic skills of education and all the basic skills of learning membaca menulis mengira but now they are standard 2 Right. Oh, that's standard one. And some so people standard, remember 2020 yeah. and a bit of 2019 as the year where kids lost the basics of uh, education. Is yeah, that precisely, precisely? Yeah. And not only those uh, basic learning skills, but also they're losing some of the life skill. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So we thought that we we need to do something. I addressed these things more than five times in the parliament. Yeah, yeah. In history, and nothing happened. I imposed a lot of questions there and some of the questions that were answered were replied but most were ignored by the mm. minister so i thought rather than you know being like a typical mp why don't i do something you know rather than cursing the darkness yeah yeah <laughs> i should like the candle hands untuk malaysia so i started to remember by helping uh, 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 all the students that uh, terkandas at the ipt Mm-mm, they they mm-mm, arrived yeah. all the way from Sabah, Sarawak, Johor, Kelantan, Terengganu. Yeah. They arrived at the campuses and then KPT made the announcement that, okay, close, go back. Correct, yeah. And, yeah. So I started with that and then we started with helping uh, students to find, uh, to, to get uh, tablets and to get uh, internet data. And we also found that some of the students and teachers uh, similarly are having uh, the mental health issues. Because yeah. of the pressure of the uh, online learning and whatnot, so we decided to make an online counselling uh, uh, service. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and eventually, we 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 reached the Murid Chiche, and now we are concentrating more on the Murid Chiche. We have started with our volunteers that we call them change makers. Mm. We train them, and we keep training them, and they are giving all their uh, free kind of free uh, tuition classes to. Students that coming from B40 families. Okay. So, thus far, it has been uh, nearly more than a month, and uh, we keep track of all those students. Actually, there were 1,600 who registered with us, but unfortunately, due to the limited sources that we have and limited mm. fund that we have, we only managed to start with uh, less than 200 of them. Actually, you know what? Let's talk a little bit about your time. Uh, In the education ministry, at times are different. Then uh, we would love to hear from you. Yeah. How? Because back then there were a lot of things being thrown around. People were talking about you, and you know, it's, it was very hard to get to the real truth. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. how would you summarize your time there? Obviously, do you think you achieved everything you wanted to achieve, or? Was there a lot that you you know wanted to do? Definitely, definitely no, definitely not. And especially uh, the time I was there, only it was very brief. It was only 20 months. Yeah. But again, if you still remember yeah. within that 20 months, not a single day people didn't talk about education. Yeah, yeah. And everybody yeah. became Hot topic. Became experts of education, and sudden <laughs> you get all those Tim, uh, Tom, Dick, and Harry talking about education, <laughs> and in the media, in the net. Everywhere mm. people talking about education. Yeah. But now I'm wondering, where are those people? <laughs> where are <laughs> those experts? <laughs> are they satisfied with what what's happening now? And you know, at least they should do something rather than. But anyway, I was satisfied that we started with something, and 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 there are a lot of uh, unfinished businesses. Mm. And but again, we have started. If you still remember, uh, during my time, I did uh, replace. Examination for uh, year one until year three with yep. a more holistic way of evaluation. Now people are talking about it, especially after the pandemic. Yeah, uh, and uh, we do. We did also introduce back the uh, civic education. Mm. It was launched uh, at in in June 2019, and it is supposed to to be continued. I don't know what happened. And we give a lot of emphasis to the children with. Different abilities. Mm. I, I talk a lot about that, and if you still remember zero reject policy. 
Yeah, yeah. We want nobody, no children to be left behind. Correct. You had an all-inclusive policy that a lot of people, yeah. yeah. But a lot of people don't talk about that when they talk about you, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I yeah. How do you feel about I, that? It is okay. It's okay because now most of them started to say, ah. Oh, Oh, he did that, lah. Back in the day when Masli was around, uh, right? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I mean, that's good. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> At least they started missing me. <laughs> <laughs> For you, though, personally, yeah. what was your biggest hurdle? I know it was only 20 months, and in many cases, I'm pretty sure you're going. I have so, like it's not even like 10% what I wanted to achieve. There's 90% more of what I want to do. Mm-hmm. But in the 20 months that you were there, what was your biggest highlight? I mean, to be honest, we still remember uh, when I first came uh, to the ministry, to the office, and until the very last day, mm. uh, I left the office. I keep talking about a few things, and at the core of it is all about uh, humanity. This is where I keep talking about introducing these three culture, three major values to education: love, happiness, and mutual respect. Nice. And I mean that, that that's the core principle of it. I, I want to make. Education, something which uh, uh, everybody's concerned. I want to turn education into something which everybody enjoying it. Mm-hmm. But again, I want to uplift our education into the next level. And actually, we can do that. Uh, if you heard, or maybe uh, you still remember when I, during my days I, I talk about laporan jatan kuasa kajian dasar, uh, which we. Uh, you know, set up a, a committee of experts from different background. Mm-hmm. They are professionals, they are experts in IT, they are educators, and even people from the military. Right. I mean, all sorts of people there. And they revise our uh, education system and they came up with a proposal. And their proposal, which was known as Lapuran Jatan Kuasa, Dasar Kajian Dasar, Dasar right. supposed uh, to be implemented Uh, by the year 2021, and mm. one of the most interesting uh, part of that laporan is about new education model that we right. wanted to introduce, in which it includes the, the 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 usage of big data and artificial intelligence in avoiding mismatch for mm-hmm. for, for the kids, mismatch at their higher secondary level, uh, whether to take uh, science stream or art stream or whatever. Right, right, stream. yes. And, yeah. and if you remember, people were condemning me when, when I said that education should be streamless. <laughs> right, right. We, we should expose our kids to all sorts of uh, streams, and eventually, they 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 uh, they will go to their tertiary studies. Whatever courses that they want to take must be guided by data mm-hmm. and by the artificial intelligence. But right. again, to make that happen, it should start. It should. Start from standard one. This is where I establish a big data committee that later been dissolved after I left the ministry. Oh no! Yeah, and TVET. Uh, so remember, we want to make TVET as one of the mm. choices because now normally people look at TVET as as a second chance. Or Correct. Yeah, because oh, vocational, you know, like uh, vocational you, skills you, training. What are you talking about? Uh, you're right? not smart But, enough. You go to vocational. Correct. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which is wrong. Which is totally wrong. Yeah. We went to Germany and we learned that actually, TVET or vocational mm. and technical they sit at par with academics. And you Correct. Know, actually, you're right because yeah. skill trade, like in Australia or in Europe, it's it's a huge industry. And actually, you know what? Even especially we've seen now, yeah. it's these yeah. kinds of skills that people still have jobs in. Yeah. yeah. But if for you, what was the biggest challenge of all? I mean, like uh, debating in Parliament, trying to get things through and whatnot. Uh, Uh, it's there's a lot of politics in education, precisely, and also precisely. you try, you have to fight against the popular opinion because you were in the news constantly. I remember back in the day, yeah. what was your biggest challenge in your mind? <laughs> you mentioned it, politics. Oh wow! Until today, I keep convincing myself, <laughs> telling myself that hey, you are a politician, because I mm-hmm. thought and I strongly believe, and my conviction is that I'm still an educator. Yeah, and right. why I joined politics because I want to bring a better education for the nation. Yeah, I want to make Malaysia as an educated nation by the year 2030. That's why I joined politics. That's why I chose to leave academia 
and mm. join politics. But again, I never knew that it is not that easy to deal with politicians and with politics in Malaysia. So you talk about the Minister of Education, about mm. our education, it's 90% politics and only 10% education. And That's tough, isn't it? When you, you are... You are all about education. You want to push it through, but you have to play politics in a way. The word tough is an understatement, I would say. <laughs> wow. It was crazy. Wow. <laughs> but it's... again, let, let us not lose hope. Yeah. When people ask me, okay, that's the end. And no, 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 it's not the end yet. Mm. That's only the beginning. Yeah. Because I told them that once I've started, I will never stop. Right. And I've been there and I know it is very possible to change our education, our, our educational system. Uh, but we need more time and we need to continue struggle towards it. Because the fight, it's, it's a good fight. It's a proper fight. But do you regret how you handled things back then? I mean, maybe like maybe you could have played the politics better to fit your educational agenda. Uh, what, do you regret anything from the time there? Oh, no. But uh, in fact, I learned a lot of things. Mm. So, you know, instead of saying that... Uh, Uh, people might say, oh, how could you correct things, uh, um, make things right, uh, or, or correct all the mistakes and turn it right? So, no, no, I said, I learned a lot of things that throughout those years, throughout yeah. the, the baptism of fire, yeah, I, said, yeah. I learned a lot of ways which are not to be repeated or mm. could be done in a better way. Yeah. So it's a process of learning and no regret at all. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, change is, change is hard. Change is sometimes painful it, and it takes absolutely. time for things to happen, but you didn't have the time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to poke a prod here a bit more. Why though? What's going on in this current situation that it, you just think it won't work? I think you did mention just now about politicking. Mm-mm. They are doing politics too much. So there's too much politicking and not too enough doing politicking. stuff? Yeah. This is very interesting. Is there something that you wish the the naysayers uh, knew what you were doing? When sometimes you read the, the the newspaper articles about you and people criticizing you, did you ever go, if they only knew what I was doing? Is there anything? If only they read more. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's true. I still remember I one of the, you know, I would say it's not writers like, because writers normally they, they, they read, but mm. people who like to write yeah. on social Keyboard media, warriors. Uh, not only keyboard warriors, but also on news portal. Sometimes All right. People, yeah. Sometimes people thought they are very smart, so they begin mm. to write and they write in the newspaper and whatnot. They wrote a lot of things about me, but they only cherry picking all the things that they believe would make their writing sensational or mm-hmm. you know whatever it is and i i still remember i contacted some of them i i started oh, really yeah I, i started sending to them mm. all those articles all those reports all those uh, news coverage about what we have achieved mm. within that limited uh, brief time frame. yeah time frame i told them haven't you read these Uh, haven't you bumped into these articles? Yeah. Didn't you aware? I still remember the other day there was a n- nowadays a hard time for clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Although I keep rejecting invitation because I told them I don't do clubbing. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but but again, I mean, my God, I, I got to use that. I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I did a t- I did attend few of of those clubhouse mm. discussion, and one of them was saying that oh, we're supposed to do this and this and this. I told them. Yes, we suppose, and we did that. Mm. In April 2019, we did launch this. Mm. In June uh, 2018, we did that. We did that. They never knew. It's not my. It's not my fault. Yeah. <laughs> when when you're writing, sometimes I still remember there's one uh, writer that keep writing at Malaysia Kini column. Mm. Uh, he did compile on his evaluation on the performance of uh, the previous government. And when it come to me, it's only I would say one paragraph good, and the rest 20 pages is all bad things. Right. And so I I I I, I tried to get his phone number. Mm. I, I was lucky enough. Really? Oh wow, wow! Okay. I wow. WhatsApp him all the articles, all the reports, and my own writing and my speeches. I said, please read this, sir, because the moment this is published and go public, 
and I am publishing my book. Mm. And one, once my book get published and get into the market, people will say that you are an idiot. Right. You know nothing. You don't read. You are mm. so lazy and clumsy. But mm. yet you dare to write. Mm. So I told him, please reconsider. Of you know, uh, you already publish it, but to 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 promote it. Please think twice because you will regret. <laughs> Wasn't there a PR team in the ministry that could help you get better? Um, in, just in my thoughts, like, because sometimes uh, yeah, I forget right, it. Right. A lot they, of people they could, could have gotten the word out better. Yeah, a lot of people are talking about this. They say that I, my biggest failure, was in PR. They said I didn't have a good communication team. I didn't have a good PR team. Uh, to be honest with you, we 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 only. Use whatever available with us. Mm. I mean the 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 corporate calm of the ministry. I'm not a politician. I'm not a uh, a tycoon, and I don't believe in cronyism to get money yeah. to hire. I mean a private PR company for me. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't spend not even a single pence mm. for my own interest. I would yeah. rather use them for the best benefit, for the best interest of the children. Mm. I'm not a nation. I can make. I mean, I can, I can siphon the money if I want, Ooh. and hire the best PR consultant right, right. or company, yeah. whatever, and to make me look good. Yeah, But that's not why I was there. All right, I was there to make our education, uh, to make our nation to be educated, mm. and to make sure that the future is much better than present. Yeah. So because you were there for the principle of it. Yes. So, but was anything? I'm going to put you on the spot here. I'm so sorry, but was there anything from the myriad of criticisms that you got? Was there any one that stuck with you and you you went, yeah, I think that was right. Oh, a lot. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, just like just like I mentioned to you, uh, I learned a lot, and not all crit not all critics are bad. Mm. Sometimes when they they came up with criticism, even if I don't like it, again, it's not about me. It's not about mm. myself. It's about what they're saying. So. Even if out of hundred that they're saying you have one right thing, I mean, I I, I would be grateful to him or her. I'm yeah. grateful to them because at least I learn how, how, how what to do better mm. and how to improve myself and how to improve education. I mean, to be honest with you, I would thank them for the for the reason that I learn a lot from them. Because you went, oh wait a minute, yeah, maybe that's true. Yeah. Maybe there's something I can learn from that, right? Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely. And amongst all that trolling. Mm-hmm. In my in the twenty years that I've been doing this, I go, yeah, I get, I see a lot of hate, but I I think about it more as passion, and I'm like, what are they really saying here? And then I'm like, oh, I think okay, maybe I sh- I should have done this better, I should have done that better. So for you, if you could, is there one that just sticks out and go, if I had done this, things would have been different. Is there one particular one? I don't think there's one. There's a lot of them. Oh wow, really, <laughs> really. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Okay. Yeah, and I have to admit that uh, I'm not perfect. I'm just mm. a normal human being. Yeah, and I would. I I must admit that I may committed a lot of uh, errors. That especially in putting uh, the message across, mm. or especially in 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 scheduling things. You know, yeah. to put the priorities. Yeah, sometimes we thought that that is the priorities, and in fact, that is the priorities. But again, before the eyes of people. Uh, they're not ready for it yet, right. so we just need to wait and come with a you know some kind of a pretext of it or some kind of uh, introduction to it before mm. we go directly. But again, in education, just like you mentioned, people are eager uh, to see the results. But in education, the result wouldn't come overnight. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, in fact, in some cases, it's a lifetime thing, and it always starts. The most important part is the basics, which unfortunately, yeah. there was just wasn't enough time. But what do you think about people always tying you to? Oh, when Masli was the minister of education, all he did was black shoes and mm-hmm. swimming pools. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you do you sometimes do? I did a lot more than that. No, I just pity the nation. I don't know. I just pity them because they don't read. Mm. What can I do more if they read? They would know that it's more than that. They only Actually, if if you could, what just quickly and then just quash it all. What was the uh, rationale behind the black shoes and the swimming pool? Just quash huh. okay. it one Num- time. Yeah. Okay. Number one, 
with regard to the, the black shoes, it was based on the survey that I've made within a month after I became minister. Mm. And most of the parents, they love the idea of black shoes. Especially I, freak, I was like, that's brilliant. Yeah. I should have had it yeah. back when I was in school. I didn't have to clean my shoes all the time. Yeah. Especially the mother, mothers. Yeah, mothers exactly. love this idea very much. Yeah. And you know, one thing, normally who has that privilege to wear black shoes? The prefects and those who go to international schools. Correct. So, and uh, it's no secret that I send my kids to international schools. Mm. They have all the privileges. But when I look at people like Kampung area, I went to Baram, uh, no, not Baram, I went to Sarawak, I went to Sabah, to all those rural places. I could see how dirty their shoes. Yeah. And it could be different when they have black shoes. Yeah. So it's a simple thing. It's not a big deal anyway. But anyway, people politicizing it and fake, make fun of it. Yeah. The yeah. swimming pools. The swimming pool, if you, if you look, if you go to any schools, I, I used to live in the UK and all my kids, they went to, to schools. They know how to swim mm. because it's, com- it's a compulsory skill to be taught at schools. Yeah. Especially at the primary schools. Survival skill. Survival skill. So when I came back, I said, remember in 2018, we did discuss it in the cabinet talking about survival skill. So we came back introducing as part of the curriculum at schools, uh, Mm. co-curriculum at schools, and it should be made compulsory to all children to learn survival skills, the CPR and those sort of things, including swimming. So, and then we, we started to introduce it. But uh, when one of the uh, reporter asked me, he said that okay, not all schools have swimming pools. Yeah, I said in, in developed countries also, there's not, not all schools have swimming pools. Yeah, yeah. Huh? So he said, so what will happen? He said, we have our co-curriculum uh, centers that belong to the ministry in, in most uh, districts. But again, uh, it may not be sufficient. So we, we said that why not certain mm. Uh, hotels, and I didn't mean the five and six star hotels, yeah, yeah. Uh, to to open their 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 swimming pool for for schools. Yeah, and then star st- as usual. The black shoes were popularized by star. Mm. After I talk hundred over things that I've done that we wanted to do, they only highlight like black school uh, black shoes. And then when it come to the survival skills, no survival skills, no nothing. They mm. say swimming pools. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I mean, uh, but it jumps out at you when you're reading a newspaper because it's sensationalism in a way, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. boom. I, oh, what is what is Musty yeah. talking about? So, I'm like, everybody would want to read it, unfortunately, right? Because yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's just sensational. It, it sells itself. And, and my responsibility is to turn this nation into an ethical one through education. This is where right. we introduce the civic education. This is where I keep mentioning about values, and we want values to be inculcated to our younger generation, not for them to repeat the mistakes of those people who are taking advantage of. I don't blame them. It's too late to correct them. Mm. They, they have been polluted. For them, it's, they have their own agenda. But my own agenda is to make sure our nation, our future generation, educated, and everybody has an equal uh, equity access to quality education. Right. You touched on this a bit earlier, so and I, I know how you feel about them uh, because you go into parliament and you argue your case. Um, the present administration, let's just talk about the, the Ministry of Education. What are they, what do you think they should be doing? I mean, it's tough times right now, you know, because it's uh, MCO, CMCO kids are in school, they're at home, it's work from home, study from home. What do you think of what they're doing? I've, right I've now? been talking about this a lot. Uh, mm. and, uh, if you could Google and the yeah. leaders could Google the 12 points that I've uh, proposed inside the parliament yeah. and yeah. outside the parliament. And the latest one was uh, my proposal, to, not only to the Minister of Education, but to, to the government to work collectively, collaboratively in a more holistic manner towards education. Because I believe that education is for all and mm-hmm. is everybody's responsibility. It's not only a sole responsibility of the Minister of Education, or the Ministry of Education. Have you? Do you think they've taken that to heart at all, the present admin? I don't know. I not, never heard not a single word from them. But when it comes to Malaysian education, and I, I tell you how, how I tried to push for English because I'm very passionate oh, yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. But what do you think is you, the biggest... You know biggest... what is wrong with, with the way of... Hmm? You know, people keep blaming uh, the schools and the ministry alike and yeah. even the teachers when it comes to English. Yeah. But again, did you notice that what what really went wrong and what 
quite been done right with English in Malaysia. What was done right with English in Malaysia? <laughs> okay, actually, the way we approach English language, yeah, uh, we try to put us, let let we say, we we trying to to put a blanket uh, solution to all situation. You know, meaning, for, for, yeah, meaning that you know, th- there are English speaking families in Malaysia. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. The way you approach them is not the same the way you approach people in Pulau Bumbum. Very true. Yes. Yeah. And the children in, for example, JB. Mm. People in JB they might understand English, but they don't speak at home. Correct. You know? So it's and not it's not immersive. It's not immersive. And what I noticed then, the way they're trying to to teach English to our students is is was was rather a stereotyping one. Okay. In, no, as if you you're using one method to all the children. Mm-mm. And then I started realize that a few of our teachers, especially the younger one, they are mm. very creative enough. Instead of teaching, you know, grammar or whatever, yeah, I started to teach English songs to the children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. Check Gu Sam. Check Gu Sam. Yes. Yeah, I told the Sam before. Yeah. Yeah. And few others, and some of them, they they're using all sort of methods. In turning English as part of things which is fun mm. for the children, part of life, easier for them to absorb it and part of their life. Mm. And without they're knowing that they are learning a new language, mm. without they feeling uh, uh, an excessive burden for them to 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 learn English, but they they started to feel like okay, it is it's not difficult. It's part of it. And if you still remember, there was a kid in Langkawi who could speak six languages. Yes, yes. He didn't go to school. We tried to bring him back to school. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure what happened to him now. Mm. But during my days, we would try to offer him to to come back to school because he's supposed to be in school. You know, just in he, kid, he yeah. didn't go to school, but he picked up good English, good yeah. Arabic, good. Maybe he's got natural Arabic. skill, natural talent for it, right? Why? Because he has interest in it. Yeah. Because he needs it, and. The contents that we push to our children mm. is the same content to everybody. Right. Yeah. So this is where I think we have learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we need to we need to be more we need to be more fluid in dealing with different situations of how people learn because everybody and learns at dynamic. a different pace, right? Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. And it, it, that was quite eye opening for me as well. And I'm like, yeah, because I, I was really trying to push for it. And I'm like, yeah, not everybody wants it. Not everybody needs it, but until they f- see the the real requirement for it in life, yeah. then they go, okay, I see where you're going with this. Mm-hmm. But for you, do you think language lessons were a big issue in in Malaysian education, or what what was the biggest problem in Malaysian education for you? They're boring. <laughs> Don't hold back, man. <laughs> okay. They're not fun. Right. This is right. where I, I introduce fun learning. Right. Yeah, that's why I keep pushing for love, happiness, and mutual respect. I want people mm. to be happy. Right. I want teachers to be happy teaching. I yeah. want children to be happy learning. Yeah. And I want parents to be happy for what their children are, and not to push them to be what they wanted them to be. You basically want people to go to school, teachers or students to go alam again, got to go to school, isn't it? Yes, we don't want that to happen. We yeah. want them to. We want them to. To keep looking forward to go to school, yeah. even during the weekend, we say, "Ah man, I'm going to school lah." Right, right, yeah. <laughs> How did you plan to change? If you were still around, I mean, in the ministry, do you think that could have happened? If the politics aside, like, let's just put all that aside. But if you were still minister of education, do you think that could have happened? Like, could you have made school fun? The key uh, solution for that is to make the teachers happy, engaged as and, well, right? And and, and I've tried that. Mm. If, you, if you notice in in most of the social media, especially in Bahasa social media, yeah. you see a lot of teachers saying that ah oh, kami rindu cikgu, ah uh, kami rindu Dr Mazli, Dr Mazli, yeah. uh, please come back bila yeah. lagi ni, ni, we miss you. Why? Because I trust that if you want to change the education system, you should start with the teachers, mm. the quality of the teachers. But again, you want to have a quality teachers, you must make them happy first. Yeah. You don't want a quality but stressful teachers. You yeah. don't want the quality, but teachers with high blood pressure and whatever. So you must, you must make sure that they dedicate themselves only for their core business, which which is to educate the children, mm. and they must love what they are doing, and they must be happy while you know while while teaching while 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 they are spending their time with the children. Mm. So this is where 
I keep emphasizing on teachers. I think nowadays I keep appreciating them, and they should be appreciated. And you should put them at the highest level in, in the community strata. Because it's a thankless job, really. The pay is, it's in, it's ngam ngam enough only, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, ngam ngam enough, and it's not really sexy job. You know, it's not yeah. a glamorous job. Yeah. But again, they dedicated that, their Correct. life for it. Yeah. And you know, a lot of stories of our teachers teaching in a rural area. Mm. You'll be surprised. I mean, I my hats off to them. Yeah, people like Chegu Nazmi and yeah. you are the Chegu that you know they 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 really did a huge effort uh, to educate their their, their students. Yeah, and that, this is where if you remember the word superhero teachers, yeah, edufluencer, we try to to popularize those kind of you know those kinds of of titles and jargon to. I mean, to 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 appreciate our teachers. Yeah. It worked, you know, all that because it was for for a long time. People weren't like think of teachers as like, oh, you know, teachers are they're this, they're that. But at that point, because you're like you found out about teachers who were who went above and beyond, it it kind of became cool that people wanted to be. Oh, I want to I want to be a good check good day sir, and I want to. I want to work hard for these people in the outskirts and everything. It was, it was cool for for quite a while. <laughs> you know, I mean, they deserve better. They deserve yeah. less. And uh, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sad learning that uh, now less appreciation been given to the teachers and worse during the uh, MCO and during the pandemic, netizens and a lot of people condemning teachers. They're saying that oh, they're not doing their jobs, but. Right? You know, it's not the case, and actually, they are they're struggling at home. Yeah. Not only they need to teach their students online, but their children also need to correct. Yeah. Online, Be, they for, people forget that teachers are parents as well because yeah. they also have their own kids to worry about. Yeah, and and you know, a lot of teachers are sharing their problems with me, saying that, uh, you know, due to the online learning, they have to spend a lot for the internet data. Some of the uh, notebook and the handphone and the devices went mm. kaput. And a lot of them have to buy new printers because <laughs> their printers are right, and, right. And Who know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, overused. Yeah, so, right. But uh, it's pity that we don't really appreciate that. Mm. Yeah. And I, I was happy to learn today that KPM started using back the phrases that we we used back in 2019, which is uh, "terima kasih cikgu." Nice. Uh, thank you, teacher. Yeah. And I still remember in 2019 we. We collaborated with uh, what is name uh, with McDo- McDonald's mm-hmm. to give free meals to the teachers during the month of May. So, uh, but now I mean they're not really doing that anymore. But the least they are doing now, they they're reviving back the terima kasih cikgu slogan. It's more than enough for me, and it gives some hope that you know, teachers still being appreciated. What a great discussion so far, but you know what? There's so much to talk about here. Uh, we're going to have to break this into two parts. So the next section of this discussion will be coming to you soon. So please do subscribe. And remember, don't be a dick. <laughs>